We are standing in front of a place called Inneres Steintor. This inner stone gate is a remains of the town's fortifications dating from the Thirty Years' War. The coat of arms above the gate shows that it was built under Paris Lodron. Strategically, the stone gate was a very important part of the town's fortifications to the south. The stone gate is also called Johannes Tor, because in Salzburg it was a habit to name the town gates after the nearest church. Just behind us is the church of St. John on Imberg, which is a very interesting church. If you are fit enough to climb the stairs, which are halfway between here and Platzl, you should definitely consider visiting this church. We are standing on a firm surface, which was not always the case. Not so long ago, approximately 150 years back, there was a drawbridge. The river Salzach flowed nine meters below, which meant that when the drawbridge was up, nobody could possibly access the town from the other bank. When we look over there, we can see where the old drawbridge was mounted on the wall, above the Salzach at the southern entrance to the town. The area behind us was called Äußererstein, which was something like the first suburb towards the south. We are now on the inner side of the Steintor, where the outer fortification to the south were installed. The guard responsible for the inner stone gate was stationed right at Steingasse 23. The entrance in front of us was the entrance to the living quarters of the guards. The guards lived and worked here. They could go directly from the living quarters to the defense towers to protect the town on the southern side. Anyone entering through this gate could be seen by the guards through these narrow slits. It was an extremely safe and easy job for the guards to protect this part of the city. Archbishop Count Paris Lodron ruled Salzburg during the turmoil of the Thirty Years' War, which took place from 1618 to 1648. He protected Salzburg to such an extent that one could compare it with today's Switzerland. It was considered a safe haven within Europe. Many aristocrats came from other parts of Europe to Salzburg to look for a safe and secure place, either for themselves, for their families or for the state treasury. Salzburg was considered to be such a safe place. The houses opposite were occupied by the tradesmen's businesses, which were preferably located on the outskirts of town. In the 15th century, where there was a dreadful smell in this area because of these types of crafts, were not particularly popular within a community. Therefore, leather craftsmen, tanners and dyers always had to set up their business on the outskirts of a town. Another reason was that they needed a lot of water and River Salzach was close by, which was very handy. And on top of this was the smell they caused. This was not acceptable in a town center. It is said that in this area a wind always blew the stench away. The houses on the side facing the mountain, where the apprentices and the journeymen lived and worked, were very damp. The masters lived in charming places under arcades on the other side, which is currently the Imbergstrasse. At the back of these houses, we can see huge attics, which were used in the past to dry the leather skins and the dyed fabrics. Sometimes the fabrics had to go through several dyeing processes so as to reach a certain quality standard. The most difficult color to produce was black. At first one had to dye the white cloth blue and then black. If the cloth had been dyed just once in black, it would have turned out gray. To dye cloth black was an expensive and lengthy process. Of course, high society people had to show that they could afford expensive products, so they wore mainly black clothes. As already mentioned, the two-step process to obtain black cloth by first dyeing in blue and then black was quite time-consuming. To apply the blue color took two days, which was great for journeymen and apprentices because they got a day off. In front of house number nine, we can see an inscription in memory of Joseph Moore. His name probably means nothing to you, which I can totally understand, although I'm pretty sure you know the song he wrote. 
But before I reveal more about this, I shall set things right. The inscription should actually be on house number 31, which is a little further south from here. But the destiny of this family is very typical of their time. Anna, who was the mother of Joseph Moore, originally came from Hallein, which is a little town approximately 15 kilometers south of Salzburg. She was only 15 when her father died. A family's right to live in a house very often depended on the professional life of the father, who worked in this case for Hallein's salt mine. After he passed away, mother and daughter had to leave their home. They moved to Steingasse 31 in Salzburg, where Joseph's mother tried to make a living through knitting. Joseph Moore's father was a soldier who disappeared after the birth of his son. Joseph grew up with his mother in extremely poor circumstances. As a young man, he was consecrated priest and moved to Oberndorf, which is approximately 20 kilometers north of Salzburg. A few days before Christmas in 1818, Joseph Moore was faced with a broken organ in his church. He needed to find a quick solution if he wanted to celebrate a festive Christmas Eve with his community. Together with his teacher friend Franz Xaver Gruber, he composed the most famous Christmas carol ever written, Silent Night, Holy Night. I'm sure you have seen this kind of cornerstones on houses before, but maybe not that many within such a small area as here in Steingasse. You may be wondering what their purpose was. They were used as spur posts because up until 150 years ago, there were only horse-drawn carriages on the roads. One can understand that house owners were worrying about the state of their brickwork. Imagine when a carriage took the turn too tightly. The big wooden wheels with iron fittings could greatly damage the walls. Therefore, these cornerstones not only served to protect the houses, but the coachmen also paid more attention when they drove through narrow streets so as not to damage the carriages. Mm -hmm.